Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and finally getting back into doing some more sympathy cards. I get so many requests to show how to make sympathy cards. I started a series a few months ago and only got a couple into it. So now I'm kind of back. Hopefully I'll get to continue adding to it. So for today's card, I'm using the new My Favorite Things Painted Prints stamp set, and this is a layering stamp set with these rather, I call them loose, whimsical flowers. They're, it's not the style where you really have to be careful about how you align layers and whatnot. These ones, you can pretty much just eyeball it. You don't even really need a stamp positioner or anything. I was using it here just so I could stamp things multiple times, but then as I was stamping more and more of the images, that's when I really noticed it was like, oh, you could just use an acrylic block and it'd be just fine. But I stamped several of the images multiple times onto some smooth white cardstock using MFT's uh, Peach Bellini ink was my first color, the lighter color. And then I'm adding Coral Crush for the second layer. And then for the final little bit, I used Tangy Orange. And then um, I'm gonna use a couple different shades of pink for the pink flowers. I didn't film all the stamping. I was literally like just grabbing scraps and stamping nearly all the images from this set. So with this piece, I was just rotating it so I could stamp um, four at once. And then for this little cluster, I started with the little flowers first and I'm stamping them with cotton candy ink. And then I'm going to stamp the next layer with ripe raspberry ink. So just quickly line that up, stamp that with the ripe raspberry ink. And then because there is coordinating dies for this set and with this stamp in particular, I wanted to make sure that the stems lined up properly because I usually end up stamping things like crooked or wonky. Um, I wanted to make sure these lined up so I could die cut it and not have, you know, the dies not line up. So I lined up the die over the stamped image and then I lined up the stem piece here to make sure the stem went where it was supposed to go so then I can line up the die, die cut it without a problem. So I got that stem lined up and then I can stamp that and I used green room ink for that. And I'm going to use the same ink as well as sour apple which is lighter for all of the greenery. So doing the exact same thing. I'm going to stamp this this leaf image multiple times and then I'm going to stamp the little second layer with the green room ink which is just slightly darker. And then for the leaves there is no layering stamp for those but I really liked these two colors of green together. So I'm going to ink them first with that sour apple ink, stamp that, and then I'm just going to ink up partially the stamps with the green room ink, just kind of holding my ink pad on an angle. And that just kind of gives it that dark color. And as that ink dries, they kind of blend into each other nicely. And then I die cut everything with the coordinating dynamics. And then I had um, stamped and die cut several of the stems and some of them I just tr like cut in half. And I'm going to adhere these to the bottom of several flowers. And my five-year-old was standing over my shoulder the whole time, like pointing out the flowers and telling me which ones to adhere. Um, she can be quite the taskmaster sometimes. Right there. <laughs> She was telling me what to do. It was hilarious. So anyway, I adhered stems to several of these just using a uh, multi-matte medium adhesive, just adding kind of a dab. And then I just let them sit for a minute to completely adhere. And then once I was kind of happy with everything, I had just die cut a circle of cardstock. You don't even, this step, you could just cut a piece, a scrap piece of cardstock. Like you're not really going to see it in the end very much. Um, I ended up completely making sure it's covered. But I used that to make it a little easier to give something to adhere all these flowers to. And I arranged everything in kind of a loose cluster. I generally, honestly, I avoid using stamps like this more often than not. I kind of forced myself to use it this time. Um, I, I'm just, I'm not, this is something I'm not gonna, and same with like actual flower arrangements, like, you know, trying to arrange flowers, like the rare times I get them, if they're loose and they need to be put in a vase, I'm just, that's just not something I am good at at all. So I usually avoid stamp sets like this because I have a very hard time arranging these flowers. So <laughs> I did it anyway. So I arranged them and then I used the press and seal to press onto them to hold them in place flipped everything over and that's where I adhered um, that circle rather than doing everything individually. So the only things that didn't adhere were those top three flowers, which was fine because I could just quickly add adhesive to those and then those kind of help conceal the sort of messy center there. So I, you could totally pop those up with foam tape if you wanted, but I kind of wanted to just adhere everything together technically flat. 
um, because I think there's just dimension with all these die cut pieces. And I kind of had arranged them in a way so that they took up most of this card. And then for the sentiment, I'm going to be using the Brush Stroke Expressions stamp set. And I'm going to ink up the With Sympathy stamp with some Versamark ink, and I'm going to white heat emboss it onto this cardstock here. So again, keeping things kind of just soft and simple. I'm not going for bling or anything like that. I find with sympathy cards, I like to just, it, 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 kinda, it always depends on the situation, but that's also why I like to have a variety. I think I've said this in other videos when it comes to sympathy cards. These are something I like to make ahead of time. I almost never can, you know, when you need one for a certain person, make it's just the hardest thing. So I like making them ahead of time. So I have them on hand. I've already put that time and effort and thought into them. And then I, it's easier for me to kind of concentrate on what I want to write to the person on the inside rather than try and come up with, you know, a card idea or anything like that. So that's what I've been trying to do is kind of build up my stash because sadly you do need sympathy cards. And um, I do prefer them to be handmade. Just that extra thought to me just means something. But anyway, back onto the card base itself. I wanted to add a little bit of something, again, keeping it subtle. So I stamped my card base with the Garden Flourish background. And I stamped it with the Versamark ink. And then I just white heat embossed it onto the card base, which is also white cardstock. So it's just a white on white, so it's subtle, but it just, it gives it a little bit of pattern and texture, but nothing, nothing too crazy. So I used that, and then I applied more of that multimedia matte behind my cluster of flowers here, and I'm just going to stick that onto my card front, and I'm just going to put an acrylic block over it just to hold it down a little bit to give it, a, you know, a minute to dry. And then I trimmed down my sentiment with my paper trimmer, and I had added some foam tape to that, and then I just adhered that over top of that cluster. And then I'm gonna tuck in some of the leaves to conceal the rest of that little die cut circle as well as just to kind of even out this cluster I've made. So I'm gonna tuck that in and then on the inside of the card, I am using the Deepest Sympathy stamp set. This came out a while ago from MFT and I will have links to everything in the description box below the video. But I really like this set. There's just some really good sentiments in there. So, and I like that the kind of scripty font matches this one, in my opinion, anyway. It just goes really nicely together. So I inked up the stamp I chose with two of the lighter inks. So I used Peach Bellini and the Cotton Candy ink. And then I'm going to stamp that onto the inside of the card. And then I'm going to adhere just one of the little leaf clusters and one of the larger flowers above it with that same multimedia matte adhesive. And then once I've got those adhered, I'm just going to take those remaining little, like I've got a little leaf and a couple flowers and whatnot that were left over from all my stamping and die cutting earlier. And I'm just gonna kind of tuck those around the sentiment here and just kind of finish everything off, fill it out and also use those up because it was bothering me that they weren't being used. So I'm gonna tuck those in and that's going to finish off my card. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. There will be a link to, um, there's a list as well as direct links to all of the supplies used below the video as well as in my blog post. And I will link to the other two videos that I've done so far in this series. They'll be at the very end. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.